Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their February of 2017 regional auction. And today we're taking a look at a Whitney Beals pocket pistol, also known as a walking lever pistol. There's an interesting mechanism to this, and it all stems from the fact that in 1854 when Fordyce Beals, by the way, fantastically cool 1800s first name there, Fordyce, um, at any rate, when Fordyce Beals made, uh, patented this design, Colt still held a patent for the idea of connecting the hammer and the cylinder in a pistol, so that when you cocked the hammer it automatically indexed the cylinder. As long as that patent was in force, you couldn't use it without paying royalties to Colt. And so Beals came up with this other mechanism where you would index the cylinder separately from cocking the hammer. But he, what he did was take this ring trigger and use it to index the cylinder and fire the gun. So a pretty cool, kind of a clever interesting design and substantially different from most of what we're familiar with from this period in history. Now he took this design to Eli Whitney. Eli Whitney was really one of the, the forefathers of industrial automation and interchangeable parts and really the, the true era of modern manufacturing. Um, earlier, Eli Whitney and Simeon North working together had created the first really truly interchangeable uh, manufacturing process, and they did that actually with Hall rifles. But that's a side note. What Whitney did at this point was he ran a manufacturing concern, but he didn't do a lot of inventing himself. He would bring in ideas from other inventors who had patents but didn't have factory facilities themselves. So you have the idea, he has the factory, and you work together and split the money, and so you'll see a lot of guns that are Whitney something. And that was always Whitney as the kind of the finance, the financial backer and the manufacturer, and the other person as the inventor and the patent holder. This is no different. Now there were a couple of different versions of this. Um, there were, the, the standard version is a 7 shot 31 caliber pistol, and that's what we have here. There were some 6 shot versions early on, there were also some 28 caliber guns, uh, all variations on the same theme. So why don't we take a closer look and I'll show you how this walking lever works and why they call it a walking lever in the first place. Look. We're going to start with the markings here. We have down on the back of the frame Beale's patent, September 1854. And then up on the top strap, address E. Whitney, that's Eli Whitney, in Whitneyville, Connecticut. Uh, in fact his manufacturing complex was large enough that it basically got its own name. He, he, he created the city around the factory and it was Whitneyville. Now the way this thing actually works is that this lever indexes the cylinder. So you would index it and then cock the hammer manually and this ring trigger also acts as, well, the trigger. So pulling this back allows you to drop the hammer. Fire that, that chamber and then index the cylinder, cock the hammer, and fire the pistol. If you want to, you can cock the hammer first and then index the cylinder. Uh, these two, the hammer and the, the cylinder indexing, are completely independent. There's no loading lever built into the gun uh, to keep it presumably cheaper and a little lighter and less bulky. So to reload the gun you have to take the cylinder out, and when we do that we'll actually be able to also see the function of this beam. Uh, in order to remove the cylinder, Pretty simple, we just have this spring-loaded catch that holds the cylinder axis in place. You can pull that out, put the hammer at half cock, and the cylinder just falls out the side. So the idea of a walking lever or a walking beam, as it's often also called, is one that has uh, significant roots in industry in general, and mechanical engineering. The idea with this system is that it's a way to turn rotational motion into linear motion. So I have my cylinder here that's moving in a circle around a center axis, and I have the trigger here that's simply moving forward and backward. You'll find this sort of system in particular in uh, railway systems. So on a steam engine, for example, a steam locomotive, you have a, a piston. The engine actually drives a piston back and forth, and you have to somehow translate that into rotation of the wheels, and you'll get that with a system mechanically similar to this. So the way Beals applied this to his revolver was to have two hooks on this walking beam. 
and then two sets of catches on the cylinder, offset from each other. And each one of these catches is responsible for half of the indexing movement of the cylinder. So when you push the trigger forward, this front arm is going to hook onto one of these front catches and rotate the cylinder, well, that distance, you can see the upward travel of that hook. Then the rear hook will have dropped into one of the, the catches on the back of the cylinder, and when you pull this lever backwards, you're now raising that back lever, that's going to finish the rotation and finish indexing the cylinder to its next station. You can hear that click, that's the trigger dropping into one of, actually one of these on the back, and then there's half our rotation, forward. So the thing to think about is that every time you move the trigger in here you have a little lever either on the front or the back that's pushing up and moving the cylinder. The firing mechanism then is actually really quite simple. It is this, that's the, the sear that pivots, so when I cock the hammer you can see that moving. And then the ring trigger itself sits on this surface, and when I pull it back the rest of the way it's just going to push this sear up. So I can do that by hand if I want to. Push that up and it drops the hammer. So you may be thinking, having looked at this revolver, it's a, a cool idea and clearly a, a creative and interesting guy came up with it, but who's ever heard of Fordyce Beals? Uh, clearly he didn't really go anywhere after this. Well in fact he did. Um, after having this produced by Whitney, uh, Beals took his next patent and actually went to the Remington company. And his first work with Remington was the Remington Beals pocket pistol in 1856, and then following that he was actually largely responsible for Remington's model 1858 uh, muzzle loading cap and ball service pistol, what you would call the, uh, the Remington Old Army, which was a major competitor to the Colt uh, 1860 and 1851 designs. So Beals went on to have actually quite the successful career, just because he was working for Remington you don't typically see his name on any of his later guns. So hopefully you found it this interesting, these are cool little guns, the, the walking lever concept is pretty neat. Another one of those kind of work around ideas uh, made necessary by the patent system. So there, there are pros and cons to the patent system, in general I really like even Sometimes the, the most broadly uh, litigated patents will end up bringing some really creative and interesting workaround solutions that may not be very practical but they're sure interesting to look at. If you'd like to own this particular one, of course it is coming up for sale here in February, uh, take a look at the description text below and you'll find a link to Rock Island's catalog page on this pistol, and you can take a look at uh, their pictures and description and price estimate and all of that. And if you decide you'd like to place a bid, you can do that right through the website as well, or uh, over the phone or live here at the auction. Thanks for watching. Look, Ma, no hand. Sorry, that was that was terrible. I apologize. <laughs>